What's going on, Bob? To fans, Jalen Williams with the distance. I'm back for another top five series for this week. You know, um, this week is going to be my top five middleweights. And I'm going to start off today with Stanley Ketchell. First off, I want to thank everybody who has wished me a happy birthday. My birthday was yesterday. So I want to thank you um, guys who had uh, messaged me on, you know, here and on Facebook and commented me. And said happy birthday. But anyway, on to the top five for this week. I'm going to kind of just mix it up a little bit. And this top five is one of our earliest middleweight champions. You know, this man is, is um probably one of the pioneering middleweights of the sport. But then again, he mixed up a he at, um, heavyweight as well, just like Les Darcy, who pretty much was my number six middleweight of all time. But my number five for this week is a name that you may not hear on many lists. And... This man is Stanley Ketchell, the Michigan assassin. Now you know, um, I, I try my best, you know, to research, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these guys that I put in my top five. But you have to have one of the pioneering, the pioneering middleweights. You have to have, you know, one of the, you know, he was a fire. He was another fighter who was like Darcy that could have been as well. But then again, he was considered one of the the greatest middleweight champions of all time. Even though he did die at the age of 24, now, um, now, and I'll go as far as to say this: I'm, I will say that he, he, I got him. I have him on the list above Les Darcy and and even Dick Tiger due to the fact that due to the fact that he was able to mix it up at heavyweight, but he was a tough fighter. You know, he fought Jack Johnson and gave Jack Johnson a tough fight, and this and. You know, even though this isn't an accomplishment at middleweight, you know, you have to, you know, you have to give quality to the fighter. You know, he, he was a tough fighter. He had a, he had a great chin. You know, he, you could even put him on my um, top chins list. You could even put him on that, even though, you know, it took Jack Johnson's hardest shots to put him out, put him to sleep. But, you know, he won the middleweight championship in 1907, and. 1908, you know, 1908, 1909, you know, he kept kept defending that title, kept defending that crown, and and you know he he fought, you know, the the Sullivan twins. I think it was like Mike and Jack, I believe, twin Sullivan, both had the same nickname, and you know, there's just not much. There's not really. There's not many fighters that that were future Hall of Famers that catch your face. Just not, but but at the same time, you know, he kept having to move up north to heavyweight and light heavyweight, and he and you know he actually tried. He did make an attempt at a light heavyweight title, you know, at a regional light heavyweight championship. He didn't win it, but you know, overall, you know, you had to put him among your great middleweights, you know, because he was a, one of the pioneering names. And you know, just imagine, just imagine if he would have stayed alive past twenty four. You know he's uh, he already made the boxing hall. I, th I believe he's in the boxing hall of fame, and he had a very short career. But the match that's always going to stand out to me is when he moved at least ten pounds up to one hundred and seventy pounds and fought Jack Johnson. And um, some say the fight was bought. They only wanted the fight to be like ten rounds. But you know if you if the fight's on YouTube, be sure to give it a look. Jack Johnson had trouble with Stanley Ketchell. You know, and, and you know, and with um Jack Johnson, Jack Johnson was putting people out left and right in his career, and I believe the fight was in like 1910, if I'm not mistaken, 1910, 1911. But it was it was in the early 1900s. That's what I know. But but um Jack Johnson um had trouble with just trying to keep Stanley Ketchell back in, you know, and actually Ketchell knocked down Jack Johnson. He actually knocked down Jack Johnson, and Jack Johnson turned around and knocked him out. Knocked him out cold, but still, you know, it's a great fight to watch. You know, it's it's one of those fights that gets better every time you watch it. Ketchell versus Johnson. And Ketchell, you know, he wanted another fight with Jack Johnson. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And, you know, he was, I believe he was, he was shot and killed, you know, at the age of 24. And, you know, his career... You know, and his career wasn't, he didn't have a full career. But, you know, he 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 was on his way to becoming one of the greatest middleweight champions of all time. 
He was. He was on his way to that. And, you know, after um, Ketchel, he didn't really have a dominant middleweight champion in years. Unless Darcy, who was, who was pretty much my number six, you know, was on his way to doing that. He was on his way to possibly becoming that dominant middleweight champion. You know, because Ketchel, because Ketchel wasn't able to become that, that good middle, that great dominant middleweight champion. We never, we didn't really have a dominant champion until maybe the, I'd say, 40s or 50s, most likely. You know, and then, you know, and then the Monzone era. But anyway, that was my number five for this week, Stanley Ketchel. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. So be sure to check check out my number four tomorrow. But anyway, that was the distance. Peace. Thanks for watching.